In the last video, we saw the steps to transform the transactional data into summary data, created a histogram to find out how many customers purchased an item only once, trained the BG and BD model. We also visualized frequency recency metrics to find out the best customers as well as uh, saw how to predict if the customer is still alive using a matrix or heat map. Folks, Nitin here and this is the AI University channel. In this video, we are going to see how to predict future transactions in the next 10 days. After that, we will develop a gamma gamma model to predict expected revenue per transaction. Lastly, we will calculate the customer lifetime value using expected number of transactions, uh, expected uh, revenue per transactions, etc. The link for the Jupyter Notebook is given in the description section as well as at the last of this video. So watch this video till the end to get the complete details. Please don't forget to hit the like and share buttons. Consider subscribing to this channel if you are new here. If you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. So let's head straight to the Jupyter Notebook where we have the related code. So in the next cell, uh, we are trying to predict the future transactions in the next 10 days. That is, we are trying to find out the top 10 customers which the model expect them to make purchase in the next 10 days based on the historical data. The customer who is going to have more number of transactions are kept at the top. That is, we are ranking customers from the highest expected uh, purchases to the lowest in the next 10 days. So in the first line, we are setting the number of days as 10. In the next line, we are creating a new column with the name pred underscore num underscore transaction, which actually depicts the predicted number of transactions. Here, uh, we are using conditional expected number of purchases up to time method. So inside this method, we are passing the arguments like T, uh, which is defined here, then frequency, recency, and T. T, capital T, is, contains the value, which is uh, the difference between the cutoff date and the first purchase date. Then we are rounding off this resultant value to two decimal places here. Okay, So using this round function, up to two decimal places, I am rounding off this value. In the subsequent line, we are just sorting the records based on a newly added column pred underscore num underscore transaction in the dis descending order and then printing top 10 rows here using head and in bracket 10. So when we run this cell, we could see uh, that we have got the top 10 customers that model expects them to make purchases in the uh, next 10 days. The pred underscore num underscore transaction column represents their expected number of purchases. So the first record says that the customer is expected to make 2.98 number of transactions. So we can round off this value and say that he is expected to make three transactions in the next 10 days. The BG and BD model thinks that these customers will be making more purchases within the near future as they are current best customers. In the next cell, uh, we are just assessing the model here. So here first I am importing the plot underscore period underscore transactions class from lifetimes.plotting package. Then in the next line, I am using it to plot the actual versus uh, model based predicted values by passing the model parameter as an argument. And the model parameter is BGF. So we can see that our model is performing really well here because actual and model based predicted values are really close as you can see through these bar charts, right? So actual is represented by blue color and the model predicted values are depicted by orange color. So these are very close. Uh, that is, there is not a significant difference between them. So in the next cell, we are trying to predict uh, the single customer's future pur purchase. So there are times when you want to predict the future number of transactions for single customer and this is the way you can do it. So first we are picking up uh, a specific rows customer ID, okay, which in our case is 14911. We have picked that up. Then we are using predict method here 
associated with BGF model to predict the expected number of transactions. We are passing the arguments T that is small t, frequency, recency and capital T just like we passed earlier and then we when we ran this cell we got the output as 2.98 which means that our model predicted that customer having an ID 14911 is expected to have a future transaction which is going uh, to be approximately 3 in 10 days. Now before we move forward uh, with the training of the Gamma Gamma model we need to understand one thing here that uh, the Gamma Gamma model relies upon an important assumption that there is no relationship between the monetary value and the purchase frequency. So we need to check if the Pearson correlation between these two vectors is close to zero in order to use this model. So here we are using COR or CORR method to find out the correlation between monetary value and frequency value here. right? And based on the output we have got here, uh, the correlation output, we can definitely move forward with finding out or training the Gamma Gamma model. In the next cell, uh, we are actually shortlisting the customers who had at least one repeat purchase with the company. So in order to do that, we are actually filtering all the records uh, which has frequency value greater than zero. That is at least they have one purchase. In the next line, we are printing first few rows to validate the data. In the next line, we are trying to find out how many customers uh, are there who has made repeat purchases. And for that purpose, we are using LEN method here on the data frame. So we can see that uh, we got an output as 2790. That means there are 2790 customers who has made repeat purchases. In the next cell, we are trying to train the Gamma Gamma model by taking into account the monetary value. Uh, so here first we are importing the Gamma Gamma fitter class from lifetimes package and then we are creating an object of it which is named as GGF here. Please note that here also we are passing penalizer uh, coF as 0 just like we did in the case of beta geo fitter. Then we are fitting the model using features like frequency and monetary value. In the next cell, we are trying to find out the average transactional value for each customer by utilizing a method called conditional expected average profit, uh, which is associated with our Gamma Gamma model GGF. Uh, we are passing the arguments like frequency and monetary value uh, in this method and then printing first 10 records of it okay so here is the output of this particular cell and you can see that customer 12346 has average transactional value of $416.91 in the next cell I'm just adding a new column for predicted transactional value in the data frame and I have named as uh, named it as a pred transaction value. Please note that this, this is just for the representation purpose only as I wanted to show both predicted number of transaction and predicted transactional value side by side. Okay, as you can see here. So predicted number of transactions are listed here as new column and predicted transactional value is also listed down as a separate column in this data frame. Finally, we are calculating the CLV of our customer for the next 12 months. So here I'm adding a new column with the name CLV to our LF underscore TX underscore data data frame. Now this column contains the value calculated from the method customer lifetime value associated with our gamma gamma model. This model takes arguments such as BGF which is a beta geo fitter model and which represents the predicted number of transactions. GGF model already factored in uh, the predict predicted transaction value in this calculation. So we are also passing other parameters like frequency, recency, capital T, monetary value and the capital T as I told you earlier uh, is the difference between cutoff date and first purchase date. Then we have time which is defined as 12 here uh, which is nothing but number of months that is one year since we are trying to predict the CLV of our customer for next 12 months.
Then there is another parameter called discounted rate which is defined, defined as 0.01 and this parameter uh, is nothing but the present value of future cash flows. Uh, discount rate is essential because you might not know the situation 12 months from now and you know there might be uh, increase in inflation or downfall in inflation uh, then there are other economic conditions as well which may lie during that time. So hence we factor in discount rate to envision uh, present value of future cash flow meaning we are just trying to mimic the future uh, CLV value in today's time. So in the next line I'm just uh, dropping all the columns and keeping only customer ID and CLV columns so that we can see uh, which customer has what CLV value. Hence I am uh, using drop method here to remove column number 1 to 6. Parameter axis equals to 1 tells us that we are performing operation on columns. Finally in the last line uh, I am sorting the records based on CLV value from highest to lowest. And I am trying to get the list of top 10 customer hence using number 10 inside the head function. So in the sort underscore values method the ascending uh, parameter is kept as false because we want to see the data in descending order. Now reset index uh, here which is another method uh, being used here is used to bring all the columns at the same level otherwise you will see columns in the form of pivot table. So when I ran the cell I got the following output and here you can see that uh, you know the customer with ID 14646 has the highest customer lifetime value of $222,128.93 which means that he is expected to purchase $222,128.93 worth of items from the company in the next 12 months. So folks this is the end of this uh, customer lifetime value series. Hope you have learned something new uh, through this series. If you did then please don't forget to hit like and share button as I get immense motivation uh, when you like these videos. So here is today's question. Out of BG and BD and Gamma Gamma algorithm or model which one helps in calculating the predicted transactional value? Please post your answers comments in the comment section given below so that I can get a chance to incorporate your feedback. You can also post your technical questions in the comment section and I will try to answer the same. If you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel, consider clicking that little subscribe button down below. In case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming video so keep on watching. Thank you.